my name is Natalie from O'Horizons. Uh, today we're going to be talking about mixing concrete for your biosand filter. Uh, so we've already started mixing everything, um, but just really quickly wanted to talk about safety. So cement, um, the cement mix can be really toxic, so always make sure that you have safety glasses, uh, a mask, and then gloves if you're going to be touching the concrete. Uh, or the cement. Uh, so always make sure that you have these things on um, as you're mixing in the beginning because uh, when it's really dusty it can get in your eyes or in your nose or something. That's uh, it's not good. So uh, we've already mixed our concrete here. Um, you can see the consistency of it. So what we usually do to make sure that it's the right consistency is, right, notice I'm wearing gloves, okay, because the, the concrete will really dry out your hands. Um, you want to make a ball with the concrete and make sure that the ball kind of stays together um, and doesn't come apart super easily, but isn't super stiff too. So this might be a little too dry, um, so we might add a little bit more water to it when we pour it into the filter, uh, but for now um, it's pretty pretty good um, to start pouring the filter um, and just you know so you know you really want to like mix things up as you're mixing it so you really have to kind of turn things over as you mix in the water and stuff uh, and definitely only add in a little bit of water at a time you can always add more water but you, you can't take water away and if it gets too wet um, then your filter uh, will fall apart when you take it out of the mold. Okay, so now that we have um, the concrete all set, we're going to go pour a filter. Okay, so before we pour the concrete, um, I just want to talk about the state of this mold. So this particular mold has made about uh, 45 biosign filters. So you can see, um, and if you get up close here, you can see that um, it's not in, it doesn't look great, but it's still perfectly functioning, right? So the wood in some parts is a little bowed. You can see that there's concrete, so it looks um, sort of to the naked eye like it's wet or something, uh, but it's, it's not. And this was just a standard sheet of AB grade plywood that we bought here in the United States at Home Depot for like 35 or 40 dollars. Um, so this is held up really well. So if your mold starts to look like this over time, um, as long as the wood isn't really, really warped, um, it will still work. So I just wanted to point out that it's okay if the mold looks, you know, like there's pieces of concrete on it and like it's, um, you know, a little worn. Um, that's totally fine and it'll still uh, function. Okay, so now we're gonna finish assembling the mold, we put part A on and put the tube in. Um, and then we're going to pour the concrete. Okay, so the mold is fully assembled, which means that we're ready to pour the concrete in. Uh, before you start pouring the concrete, it's always a good idea to just take a peek in there and make sure that you don't see any light coming in. Because uh, if you do, that just means that uh, there's some gaps in certain pieces of the wood. And you probably just need to tighten um, your nuts and bolts a little bit more. Um, so usually that'll fix it. So checking it, um, I don't see any light, so that means that we're good to go. Um, we recommend using a trowel or some sort of scoop to uh, put the concrete into the mold. Um, what I usually do and what we suggest is that you put it, the concrete in a circular motion, okay? So I'm gonna start on this side and then put it in the back. make sure that it's getting in there and then I'll do the front one. And so just continue to do it in that way and that way you know that um, the mold is getting filled evenly because what you don't want to happen is 
um, the inner core to shift too much to one side. So if I put all the concrete on this side first, that's going to push the center over and your filter will be lopsided. So I'm just going to keep filling this. Um, once I get about halfway, um, then I can start um, tamping the mold with a rubber mallet or if you have like a piece of uh, rebar, like a metal rod, you can start tamping the concrete. Um, and again, just always make sure that your center floor is staying right in the middle of the filter and there's you know, an even amount of space on all four sides. Uh, so I'm going to keep filling this. Uh, and yeah, that's, uh, let's keep moving, moving through the process. Okay, so we filled the mold about uh, two thirds of the way. So concrete's up here. And what I've been doing as we've been filling it, I've been uh, tamping or vibrating the concrete with this rubber mallet. So it's really important that you use a surface that is rubber and not like a metal hammer or something. So this is made out of rubber, um, and what I've been doing as we've been filling the concrete uh, is just and you want to do that on all four sides of the mold. So when you first start filling it, um, you want to tamp towards the bottom. And then obviously as the concrete gets higher, then you can tamp further up the mold. Um, as you're doing this, you're going to start to see some concrete coming out, or some water really, um, coming out the bottom. Um, that's okay. Um, so if you have filled the mold like halfway or maybe up to like here or so, or a third of the way, and you don't see anything coming out, uh, that probably means that your mix is too dry. So it's actually good to see some of this. You might have a little bit too much water, so our mix might be a little bit too wet, um, but it, it, we'll see tomorrow if it's okay. Um, so just make sure that you're, you're vibrating on all four sides. Um, really important that you, you just hit the plywood, so don't hit the bolts or anything. That'll bend them. Um, also, when you're tamping the nose, okay, as you're filling the nose, it's really important that you only hit on the top here or on the bottom. So do not hit this. You can see that uh, we already had to make a repair on the nose. So this extra piece here, um, you can see this is what the original piece was. Um, and just from over time, right after 45 pours, the nose is the weakest part of the filter, so it's probably the thing that will break, um, you know, during the 50 pours. So we added just a little um, extra support, and we talk about that in the appendix if you're curious about that. But never hit directly on the nose. Always just hit here. You can hit the support pieces. You can hit down here or underneath. If I had a smaller mallet, you could hit down here. Um, so you want to see some concrete coming out this side, like on here, right? So that means that the nose is filling, so that's a good thing. You can see that there was some coming from over here, so that means that the nose is being filled with concrete. That's what you want. So, uh, yeah, the mold is about halfway, or two thirds of the way filled right now, so we're gonna keep filling it, and then I'll talk a little bit more about um, you know, how to leave it overnight and stuff so that you're ready for the demolding process the next day. Okay, so the mold is completely filled. Um, you can see that over here um, you want the top of the filter level. So this is actually going to be the bottom of your biosand filter. So tomorrow when we demold, so when we take the filter out of the mold, um, you actually flip it over. So this is going to be the very bottom of your filter. I, I put a little OH in here for O horizons. Um, no one's ever going to see the bottom of the filter, but if you want to, it's kind of a fun little little thing to do. Uh, but yeah, important that you try and make this as even as possible so that when it goes in someone's home, right, the, the biosand filter is on a flat uh, surface. Um, so what we're going to do now is we're going to leave this overnight. Uh, we'll probably wrap 
this tarp up so that the filter is covered um, and that just helps the curing process a little bit. So we usually say like, like overnight, right? So it's the afternoon now, we'll come and we'll demold it in the morning. Um, and yeah, we'll see how it goes. Um, you can see right here, I didn't mention this before, but this tubing is really, really long. Um, we just buy, um, you know, we just use extra because it's a little bit easier to work with. You definitely do not need this much, much extra. And then of course, when the filter's done, right, you'll cut the tubing down here so that there's only a little bit poking out. Um, you can see some of this water and stuff down here. Um, like I said before, it's, it's good to have some water coming out of the filter. That's how you know that your concrete is wet enough. Uh, we might have made our mix a little bit too wet. Uh, we'll see tomorrow when we demold. Um, so it's okay to have some water. You don't want to have too much. And definitely if you have no water coming out of the filter, that means that your concrete is too dry. Um, yeah, so we're going to cover this up with a tarp. Um, let it sit overnight and then we'll demold it in the morning.